the positives are that I think there is now a real recognition that, um, as I said, our food systems and what we eat are really causing massive problems for our health systems. So why is that a positive? It's a positive because many countries in the developing world want to set up universal health coverage. Their, their citizens are demanding it as they get better off. Mm -hmm. It's becoming a political issue for them. But universal health coverage is going to be very, very expensive unless we do something about diets. So I think this, this disconnect we're seeing between food systems and health systems is gradually being closed. And I think that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned uh, schools. Um, because I think one of, one of the most promising things I've seen is, is kids becoming radicalized about this issue. Not enough yet. We're not at the Greta Thunberg level. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you saw her speech at the yeah. UN General Assembly, the video mm -hmm. of it. It's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a blog about it last week saying, where's the outrage that people can't get nutritious food easily and affordably? Where's yeah. that outrage? It's not there at the moment. We talk about impossible burgers, but... It's impossible to get nutritious food that's affordable. Where is the outrage? So, um, one of the one of the things I'm um, involved with in a pro bono way mm -hmm. is um, this. Um, it's called Bite Back 2030, okay. which is uh, something that's being put together by a number of different foundations. One of them is, is Jamie Oliver's foundation. Okay, and I like it because it's it's really. Um, it's really got two elements to it. It's sort of above the above the line. It's led by youth. So there's a youth advisory board. Um, the, the youth are sort of um, developing the outrage and saying to businesses, governments, um, people like me, what, what are you doing about it? How, mm -hmm. What are you doing about it? And we want to be part of that. But it also mirrors something we're doing in our work at GAIN in Bangladesh, um, which is, again, treating adolescents as agents of change, not just recipients of programs. So we have this right. thing called the Pocket Money Pledge, in Bangladesh. We've gotten a million kids, a million adolescents working through youth groups all over the country. And Bangladesh is 80, 90 million people mm -hmm. working through youth groups all over the country to sign up to a pledge that says, we pledge to spend more of our money on healthy snacks. If you, the government, make it easier for us, and if you, um, kiosks and, and retailers, mm -hmm. stock more of this stuff, and we're going to we're going to um, set up a, almost like a, um, a validation mechanism, a uh, certification mechanism, which says this is, this is approved by the Pocket Money Pledge. This program or this, this food outlet or this retailer is approved by the Pocket Money Pledge because you commit to improving the, the quality of the food that you sell or produce. And I, think, I do think the outrage level has to, get, I mean, has to be constructive and it has to be channeled yeah. and focused. But I do think it's going to be the younger generation that's 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 generating a lot of it, and uh, the rest of us are going to be supporting that. And we need to do a better job of that in schools. I don't know why schools don't teach more about how to cook food. It's